Good afternoon, everyone. How you all feeling? I'm just all encouraged. It's just amazing how like attracts like. How we don't have to figure any detail out. And look at this wonderful gentleman here. Mr. Mitch Carson, he wants to come over and shine some more communication details about how you can just share with him or how he can share with you. I mean, give us more details, Mitch. What are you going to be sharing about? Didn't you say you have a show or something? Like yeah, that? Afi. Well, well, thank you. First of all, I feel privileged to be on your show. Thank you. And I want to start with, I really dig your hairdo. So that's pretty, <laughs> that's cool to start. Keep the energy right and up. I help speakers and authors get guaranteed television interviews on major networks here in the Las Vegas market. That's what I do. So I, what I want to be able to share with your, your folks in the short time that we have together, some things that show producers look for. And if the, the, you know, the old adage, Afi, there's a book inside every person. And that's an easy way for people to showcase their talents is to use their book, which I liken to their thumbprint, which is unique. Everybody's got a unique thumbprint. And to showcase and share their knowledge so they can help people. Right. Experiences are critical. Hello. Yes. Yes. And as we get older, I'll seek it's more important to be able to share with the younger generation what we've learned and to hopefully shorten the path to delight enlightenment, success, happiness for those that might be struggling. And there are a few ways to get there faster. You know, you can always, you, you, I used to hate it when I was younger, Afi, and someone would say, when I was your age, I wish, you know, I, you ha I had somebody like me telling you what to do. I don't think anybody wants to be told what to do. We can certainly share what has worked for us, and it's up to the recipient of the message whether or not he or she chooses to use it. And it may not fit today. It may fit in the future. This is what I've said. And when I should on people, they feel like they've stepped in poo-poo. So I don't should on people. It's better yeah. Not. Yeah. Here's my experience, what I've done. The, does that seem like it fits for you? Clearly. That's why I like what you were saying that everybody's got one. Cause that's why I remember. Oh, <laughs> here we go. That's why we all have our one. You got all the details. Cause you see right there when I came out of the brain surgery, is when I published mine, but it's just that about getting folks to be aware of how how many details. Because you guys don't have the Harriet Tubman, the Julius Caesar, the Prince story. You have the Prince story right here with Flojo, and here you have all the details about how they all had to handle epilepsy just like me. So that's why I have that one, and you can see that one, or you can connect with me on my website. You know, breaking the cocoon, or you can connect and go over many more things at Amazon. So I love. Just go over to. Either one. And do you speak Spanish? No, oh, Espanol is mi pasión. So, sí, yo segundo naturaleza, because todos los idiomas aquí es en español segundo para um, americanos. Oh, okay. And where did you learn? Because cuando estamos bebé, no hay una otra opción. So, elementary, you know, okay. elementary, college. Okay. Es importante para... Hablas muy bien, entiendo todo. También estudié en escuela. Yeah, y right. aprendí en escuela secundaria también tres años en colegio. Yeah. Y también uh, nacido con una cubana. At, well, I, I should probably speak English because I think everybody speaks English here. Is yeah, I, I learned it also by total immersion, and that's that's a great communication, great second language, as you said, very important, especially yeah. where we live. If you're in Anaheim, you're going to be using it every day. A lot <laughs> of Latinos in that area. Well, LA has got way way more. That's why. I'm oh, here. LA is half of it is Hispanic, yeah, or more. Sure. So I'm always enjoying all of the spots, but hmm, you always think one area's got much more. I thought oh, LA had the most, but when I had to go and do a flip on a Dallas trip, I had to go to that Dallas airport and um, transfer to a different spot. And Dallas airport is all <laughs> Espanol e English. Wow. All the Spanish and English over there. I'm all like, whoa. Okay. So it's really, muy importante. And mi hermana, my sister, is a lawyer for Disney doing all kind of Spanish and English moves. It's just like, okay. I seen it. What do you think of my sports is a beer? Just don't minimize all the different abilities that we can all strengthen. You strengthen no, you're them. right. You're yeah. right, Alfie. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what right. you're all clear about the how to communicate all clearly. What other details would you share? I think you have to identify. Now I'm talking to business people, and it's and it. Let's just say it more, more. I'm largely focused on helping 
businesses communicate with other business owners or to consumers. So the common question you get asked, I was attending a podcast conference last week in Washington, D.C. called Podcast Movement. I was there learning about the podcast industry because I'm going to be hosting my own podcast very soon. And one of the things that I learned in that podcast is you have to be ready for when people ask you, so what do you do, Mitch? So what do you do, Afi? Got to come back with your elevator pitch. And the purpose of the elevator pitch is to communicate with somebody very quickly between the ground floor and the floor where you leave off. I was on the seventh floor of this hotel, the Gaylord Hotel, and somebody asked me at the ground floor and I had to put into play my elevator pitch. So what do you do, Mitch? I help speakers and authors become the celebrated expert in their niche by ne embracing network television, network radio shows, and being able to make more money faster than they ever thought possible before. Now I say that because I've identified who I'm communicating with, who I don't consider. So if you're a, a plumber that's working for ABC plumbing services, you're probably not a candidate for me to do business as opposed to me answering in a short answer. I could have said I'm a publicist. And then oftentimes I get asked, well, what is that? If people don't understand it? Oh, that's great. Instead, I answered who my clients are specifically and the benefits they get by doing business with me. Big distinction, big difference, you know, is if a lady or a, per a man is a realtor selling homes in LA, which is big ticket, as you know, you're out in the LA Orange County area. It's big ticket. They want to make their 6% Commission, someone says, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a realtor. Boring. Versus I help people find the home they never thought possible, their dream home, and make it their reality. Oh, so you've painted a picture as a realtor, giving them the opportunity to envision their dream home. And then the benefit is I take the impossible into possible, as opposed to, oh, I'm a realtor at... Century 21. So is every other Tom, Dick, and Harry. So I think it's the words are powerful. How we frame them communicates pictures for people to grasp and understand. It's clear because when you're just doing your heart and your soul, you don't have to think about it. It's so easy and positive and people just love to hear what that you don't have to come up with the exact words every single time but when you just start that's when it's easy for your soul to finish off and just give you more and more and that's why i just jump for joy <laughs> joy Good. joyful i love to see that the joy literally is our strength and we don't have to come up with every strategy uh way. It's just that this one here works for me. And I just keep mm -hmm, moving on and moving forward and just seeing better rewards, better, better results as I just have that one. And it's like attracts like, like you're saying in the elevator. I like that one. Because when I go to the elevator, I'm high-fiving. Remember, get a high-five. Five people you do not know. And that's when they're all like, oh, okay. I, what, what's going on? At first, people are like, mm, what's going on? They might be hesitant. But once you just respond back with love and joy, they're like, oh, okay. That's what's happening. And so I just love just leaving that loving impression and just getting more folks that want to get cards and want to get to know you as you're walking away. But they're like, well, actually, let me see. So it just feels good on those. I agree. It's great. Hey. <laughs> That's why I just love it because I see how everything is about the souls when you don't have to figure everything out. Because I mean, dancing. You clearly, I love that angle because when you don't think about it, when you just start moving and letting the rhythm and the things in your body just shine off, that's when all the right moves go. But when you think about, oh, the exact one that I should do for this, oh, stop thinking about it. Don't figure it out. Just let your whole soul shine the joy. And that's why I love salsa that way because I don't think about the one, two, three. I just start doing the moves and it all comes into alignment. I like it. So clear. You almost got me in the dancing mood. Hey, hey. <laughs>
<laughs> it shows that we just get into the moves and hey, all the things work together for the good when all of us just uplift each other. So what was a different move that you did this week? Is there any other move that you had that was differently? What's What moves did I do this week? I have made it a concerted effort to minimize, if not even remove today, I had none, sugar. Because I think if I eat too much sugar, you know this as I can see you've got all the fruits behind you. Yeah, refined sugars tend to make me hungrier and more and more hungry. And and it is a never-ending negative cycle. So I've cut out sugars and stopped eating after six o'clock. And just in one week, I've lost nine pounds, mm -hmm. which has been a real game changer for me because I had some heart issues earlier. Well, actually in December of last year, I had to have a couple stents put in after suffering, you know, some heart disease and I haven't paid much enough attention. And then something happened recently where I said, you know what? I don't want to be gone yet. I better correct this. I better handle this short-term craving for the better effect. And right now I'm not craving anything. I'm not even hungry. And I think there's something, I think that sugar is a real negative. Aren't you an expert about that? Isn't that a real negative, Alfie? Alfie? We all know I would just stick, stay away from that sugar. It's the biggest drug. It I'm is. <laughs> it's worse than crack. It's legal, it's legal crack in a candy it. bar. I'm just so grateful for doing that study abroad in Spain. That was years ago. I just see how... All them over there was all focused when they have their dark chocolate. It tastes way different than the chocolate we get over here. <laughs> it just amazed me. I only got a little, little itty bitty piece from them. But it's just like, oh, so this is what they talk about. So no, oh, no wonder it's not much. But okay, at least I know I'm doing a, mm -hmm, it feels more natural. And so I'm just like, oh my goodness. But it's just the harder part when you start any sugar anytime. That's when you want more. Yes. So over years, I was just like, okay, let me just focus on the natural ones. You can't tell me you're beating me up for having these apples and bananas and so forth. So I do all my fruit. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, fruits are, fruits are good, yes, but that's a natural sugar versus the refined sugar, which is problematic and creates more and more appetite of the same. And I think it's a vicious cycle. I hear you. I hear you. You just have to see the balance that goes and everything with me. Because when I just got thin and was doing all my stuff, even some years, and then I got all excited, like, oh, I can have a little bit of sugar now. And boom, wrong. <laughs> doesn't work for you. But who cares? I just learned to be disciplined and drop all of that. And let me just set the right example, the right place. Sure. sure. <laughs> Definitely holding on there. So um, so you want to share how to communicate more clearly and more angles, like more spots so they can do some hmm, non-sugary. They can just communicate with, with you somewhere or what? Yeah, I... I, well, in my profession, I work as a publicist and I help people speak in sound bites, very focused when they get on TV, because the goal is to get them covered on television, on major networks like ABC, Fox, CBS, NBC, and the CW. These are the big channels here in America, and all of them are represented in, in Las Vegas, where I live. Similarly, they're in LA, where you live, or Orange County. And I have to work with people to narrow down their message with answers because typical TV interviews range from two and a half minutes to four minutes, rarely beyond that without having a commercial break. I mean, if you're a major celebrity and you're invited onto a show, they may have you in segments, but they have to make space for advertisers because that's where they make their money. It's in between the experts that are showcasing whatever it is that they're showcasing or whatever they're sharing. If, a big name person is on a show, they take breaks every so often. But if you want to get your point across, you need to be practiced, prepared, and know how to answer again in sound bites, answering the question. If you answer with, well, you know, so, um, yeah, at the beginning, those are filler words and you want to eliminate those before you go on air. You want to sound like an adult versus a child. If you answer questions with, um, yeah, yeah, right, or like. I love it when people use like in every sentence. Like what? I like you. 
Do you like me? Is that why you're saying like? So we want to be aware of those words uh, before you get interviewed on TV. It's a little bit more lax on radio. On radio, the interviews are typically longer. It's audio only, less pressure than having big cameras pointing at you, broadcasting you to live TV land audiences. And it's a different skill set. It spills over. Have you been on TV, Afi? You've been interviewed on any shows? Well, that's why my podcast, yeah. Yep. You know, this one, mm -hmm. this one's continued to constantly do the other ones there that are similar. So that's why I've done those. And it is cool. I'm just trying to get myself on, to, well, my shows I just want to do are game shows. So let me see about, hmm, if I can get on the other. <laughs> Will of Fortune or Price is Right. And oh, that would be fun. Because I just love playing games and making it that way. But otherwise, just come over and just keep shining the communication through the other shows that you do. Yeah, I've never been on a game show. That would be fun. I've been on a show with a live TV audience. That was interesting in Manila. It was very brief, a little bit intimidating because the lady interviewing me was a former Miss Universe. Boy, was she beautiful. And it was fun to have that. And I answered and I certainly didn't take my eyes off her. Uh, you have it on your heart. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's the whole thing. We can just get folks to see because I'm just trying to uplift and get all the folks motivated. You're going to high five um, everyday folks who still acting like they're afraid to touch people. You can just, hey, let's just thumbs up while we're in line at the grocery store. Are you guys pumping gas? Enjoy this weekend. Enjoy this week. We can just all feel good and just feel that, okay, it's not a, any negative vibe. We're just all shining that there's a positive vibe and that everybody is going to be encouraged because of all the examples. Oh, I'm an auntie. I am so grateful for just being the auntie. But I just see how fast kids get loved so quickly. Why can't all of us adults give each other the same loving encouragement and just shine that, yes, this is a loving church, a loving communication. Is what is it? Oh, that's why I love to sing. Reach out and touch somebody. I love it. <laughs> Got a great voice. Well, mm -hmm. gosh, well, I appreciate you having me on your show today. Be able to share some of these tips with your people and learning that you have a good voice and you'd like to shine the light and uplift the vibe. Clearly. That's why I love to hear that you were talking about. That's how to get to you. Is this, this is the website you want to share folks to hit you up on. Yeah, well, if they, if any of your listeners are interested in getting on network television in Las Vegas, they can find me at getinterviewedguaranteed.com forward slash meet with Mitch. Getinterviewedguaranteed.com forward slash meet with Mitch. That's where they can find more information about how they can use television to grow their brand, grow their experience, their exposure, and become great communicators. <laughs> Great communication. Well, thank you for the uplifting vibe today, Afi. Well, thanks for joining me and everything. I just want to get more folks to see. Hey, more doors will open when you do not give up. It's true. All right. Well, great. Thanks for having me. Well, you just enjoy your whole weekend this whole time. And we can just all shine that the entire time that we live. All the days are fun days. Great. All right. Have okay. a good one. You bye too. Bye-bye.